Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. Yes. <laughs> uh, Dave. Yeah, I've, I've, I've just figured out what's going on. Thank you, Peter. So I have not been holding down my push to talk because I've been too used to be playing with voice activated. And uh, <laughs> everything I've just said has been blanked. So yes, it has. <laughs> in, in a nutshell, session 35. Welcome. Ancient bunker. Lots of puzzles, lots of traps. They've worked their way through to the end. Evil orc from their past who killed one of their friends. Skeletons protecting him. Kassar's going. <laughs> great. Enemy currently paralysed. And he's currently paralysed because Cretella's classed whole person on him. Am I able to shove my way past Cluck and Ulfar? Yeah. If they will allow it, then yes. Yeah, we're not going to stop yet. Okay. <laughs> speak for I'm yourself. Can't, can't speak for Clark yet. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I would like... allow this. Hell no. <laughs> this is un... Duvar thinks it's highly <clears throat> unusual for him to be shoving past anyone to get to a fight. <laughs> yes, Duvar, the one who wanders off during a fight. <laughs> That's highly rich. <laughs> My tactic worked. All right. In which case, I'll I'll um, shove my way past the two of them. Um, okay. To get to about here, I think would probably be where I'd expect. And uh, I'll point a finger at him and say, "You, you're the one who killed Ganvix. You uh." You won't escape this place, and then I'll uh, I'll shoot him. Uh, I'll I'll first cast Slayer's Prey on him, and then I'll shoot him twice. Okay. And I should get advantage, right? Uh, <laughs> you do. Okay. In that case, I'm going to use the sharpshooter uh, plus minus. So, 17. It's a hit. Okay. For 32 damage. Okay. And the second attack. Exactly the same roll as last time. <laughs> it's also a hit. How is that? I mean, the odds on that, right? 32 damage, yeah. Yeah, let's see that again, please. For an additional 23. Well. So the extra, the 2d6 on the first one is a sneak attack because I've got advantage. Uh, and exactly, that is exactly the same roll, but the 5 and the 4. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> it's exactly the same in the same order. <laughs> the odds, man. So that's a total of 55 piercing magical damage. Okay. Yeah, yeah boy. Did you say you used Slayer's Prey on him as well? Yeah, that was the that was one of the 2d6. Do you only get 1d6 on your sneak attack then? Yes, I yeah, believe he's, he's so. Yeah, he's only a little rogue at the moment. Yeah, uh, I forgot. I'm, a, I'm, only, I'm only a little roguey. And, um... He's, he's such a little roguey, he spells, he spells it rouge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone takes the mick out of it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. That is that is me. Okay. That will bring us on to Ulfar. I will call upon my god and channel the divine ele uh, energy of him to turn undead. All the undead in the room need to make a DC 14 wisdom saving throw. Within 30 feet of me. A DC 14 wisdom. Oh, they're not very good wisdom. at wisdom. No, that's kind of the point of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I lost. Oh, yes, lost that's 20. what we want to see. Oh, they did not do good. <laughs> okay, so um, if they're turned for a minute or until they take any damage. A turn creature must spend its turn trying to move as far away from me as possible. Uh, and it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of me. So they've just literally got to run into the corner of the room. It also uh, can't take reactions. It, for his actions, it can only dash. 
Um, it can use the dodge action if it can't move any okay. further. That's it. Are you able to post that in the chat thing? Uh, yeah. Uh... So one minute, which is like, what's that? Six rounds? Ten rounds. <clears throat> Ten. Okay. Um, that's my action. Um, and then as my bonus action, I am going to cast Guardian's Shield on Cluck. Okay. Who's undoubtedly going to run straight into bashing mode, I would hope. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to move at all? N no. Wink, wink. No. Clock. Well, since I don't, didn't move. You can, you can move past me. You can move through him. I'm going yeah. to steamroll through him. <laughs> <laughs> and shouldn't the uh, zombies be at the back of the room by now? Uh, they've not acted yet. It's not till their turn, but they can't do. Uh, they can't react anyway, so it's not like they get off. Uh, can we still attack them? And... If no, you attack, you'll break it. You'll break it if you attack them. Yeah, I thought so. So. Truck's going to see the red mist. Mm -hmm. Rage! Rage! Run past all fast. Auto crit. Dropping the shoulder as he goes past to knock all out of the way. <laughs> to stand here. Mm. And then he's going to attack this undead for first. Okay. <laughs> that is completely in character. For no, clock. I know! I know it is, but <laughs> it's just so annoying. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. He's going to attack that zombie. That skeleton. Skeleton, yeah, That skeleton carrying a great axe. <sighs> Looking fairly orcish. And I'll give myself fighting spirit at the same time. Twenty and a twenty-four. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, so I'm gonna give myself plus two to damage for bloodlust. Eleven. Okay. Uh, what else are you doing, Clock? Uh, I am. And then I'm then going to turn my attention to him. Okay. And I'm going to start attacking him. Okay. So, uh. Yes, yeah, so just so so you're clear, the, the skeleton uh, looks none the worse for wear for your hit, although you definitely okay. did connect to him. So it's not like okay. you've destroyed him, just so you're aware. So I'm aware that Cluck's probably got a WhatsApp message from somebody saying, you stupid fool. <laughs> I do not care. <laughs> In fairness, the, the in-game cleric is probably saying exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if yeah. you're attacking him, you've got advantage on him. Uh, not that you need it, I really need it. Uh, you do you should roll it with advantage but uh, as long as you hit you will auto crit him while he's paralyzed uh, I don't do it with advantage or just roll it again I uh, don't worry about oh, yeah. it it you've hit him so it turns into a crit so you don't need to worry about the advantage Okay, so what's my attack now then? So it'd be 2d. Uh, plus... you, you add whatever you would normally roll to it. 
so if it's 2d4, uh, you can add 8. Okay. So 2d8, uh, 2d4 plus 8 plus whatever your normal modifier is. Have you never critted before, Clock? A, lo a, while, a long time just, ago. Yeah, I think it's such... I mean, I'm barely remembering what it, what it is either. And I've critted recently. I know I have. 21. Okay. And then I will also do action, action surge. Take another another attack. Advantage. So, is there any way of doing that just by clicking on my... Uh, yes, you, can. you can go into your character sheet and select your weapon, can't you? Yeah, you just need to set it up in your character sheet. Oh, I haven't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that. There you go, then. I'll just do what I was doing before. <laughs> Well, it twice. It's just as easy. Uh, twenty-five and twenty-four. Uh, yep. So, assuming you're hitting the orc again, that is a yep. crit. Yep. And I'm just gonna re-roll that because I can. Nice. <laughs> twenty-two. Okay. And then the red mist will descend. So, uh, if you use your action surge, you've actually got another attack. So you'll have four in total. Okay. Because when you when you take the attack action, you get two attacks currently. <laughs> 18 and 18. Okay. I take it that's a hit. Yep, and another crit. And oh, yeah. 22. <laughs> yeah, boy. Okay, at this point he starts to look blooded. <laughs> I am I, I I am not as up, upset about you hitting the skeleton anymore. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine. And as the uh, the red mist goes from truck size, I'm gonna shout, That's for Gamvix, you bastard. <laughs> have you used the bonus action yet? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Also, have you, you noticed that I gave you plus two to AC cluck with just so you know that going forward? Oh, okay. Yeah. No. I'm sure. I'm surprised Kazai isn't shouting out. That's the wrong freaking guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, the skeletons will cower at the back of the room and take the dodge action, apart from the one that Cluck has uh, released. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, who's it going to smash first? Roll a d4. Uh, no, it's gonna smash Kassar. <laughs> In oh. that case, you have disadvantage. Pourquoi? Um, because before the fight, when we found out he was evil, I cast protection from evil and good. And it grants disadvantage on attack rolls against me. Uh, I also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by anything that is... Aberration, Celestial, Elemental, Fae, Fiend, or Undead. Perfect. Is that concentration? It is indeed. Okay, let's see how long that lasts. So his first attack is a 12. That does not hit. His second attack is a 16. That also does not hit. Ooh, you lucky boy. Holy shit, I've just seen the, the dice you rolled versus the actual attacks. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh no. Duvar. Hello. Yes, you didn't think Hello. this fight was going to be easy, did you? <laughs> I've had yeah. all, all no. week to decide how, how how to turn this entire scene into into his advantage. <laughs> It's fine. Is this a yeah. plan you had with Cluck to make keep one of the <laughs> fucking skeletons in play? Nope. <laughs> Some secret backdoor decrease. Cluck is just Cluck. <laughs> Cluck is just Cluck. Cluck does <laughs> what wants to do. <laughs> I just kind of imagine him literally running through everyone holding his scimitar up high. He didn't even swing, he just ran through and cleaved from one <laughs> side and the other side. Yeah, you're, you're lucky it wasn't you, Ulfa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be fair. I have bloodlust, so I don't know what I'm doing. I just attack. <laughs> oh yeah, this should have been a wisdom saving throw there. Should 
Oh, yeah. Well, missed your chance now. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, characters forgetting the negatives of their own skills for their own benefit. <laughs> Do it. Oh, save make, make an intelligence save saving throw, Glock. Sorry, it's not wisdom, hey. it's intelligence. Make an intelligence saving throw. Yeah. Intelligence. Uh, <laughs> you're minus two to intelligence saving throws. You and me both, Glock. <laughs> oh, that was nearly a 20. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, roll a d4, Glock. <laughs> nope. Three. Okay, next turn you attack all fire instead. Oh, oh god. <laughs> Prepare to be, uh, I'll try and roll crap. <laughs> Duvar! Uh, well, Duvar's trying to figure out what's going on since he just ran in and started attacking a. a skeleton or whatever it is uh, instead of attacking the guy the main guy but i suppose he'll uh he'll shrug his shoulders it, these skeletons does. do look pretty nasty they're probably sort of the size of clock carrying axes that bigger than clock true they look but, as if they, you took the biggest baddy socks from upstairs and did a bit of undeady find them well i'll do that will just attack here, the, the, the guy in front of him. Yeah, just uh, straight up attacks, I think. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, here we go. That's that is not a hit. No. <laughs> not. Try, please try again. Please try again. Actually, should I do it with advantage still? Uh, no. There was no advantage against those. Against yeah, advantage is on the main guy. Okay. I thought it was. Anyway, second one. Uh, 17 is a hit. I should hope so. Jesus. <laughs> There's nine clocks gonna hit me, I'm glad I got up and javelin and shield at the end of last session instead of my bloody more. For six points of damage. Okay. Okay, and as bonus action I'll uh, attack again. Misses. Uh, <laughs> that brings us back round to our little friend. Now remind me, it's a saving throw at the end of his turn. At the end, yes. And your wisdom 16. Yep. Per. That's how well he does. He's brought out the loaded die. <laughs> That's, yeah, he's just getting them out. He's writing the code in. <laughs> he Fucking is, hell. He is no longer held. He has a plus five wisdom. <laughs> Fucking. Which means he's 20 to 21. Oh. Okay. Now, no wisdom he, he Very could wise, old orc. He could just have proficiency. Wisdom isn't even yes, his that's, best uh, that's, saving throw. That's true. That's true. I've got plus six to wisdom, and I've only got 16, so. Okay, uh, uh, so that was the end of his turn, so that brings us back around to you, Critel. Well, I am going to take a step forward. Yeah, he is. And I'm going to try and hit him. Let's see what Although, you can do. I will also use a bonus action first, though. Okay. And I'm going to use that on him. The Channel Divinity Vow of Enmity. Okay.
So 14 was my highest. 14 is a hit. Ooh, he's squidgier than I remember. We've probably just got a bit tankier since then. He's gotten smarter. Oh, mega minded. You've caught him unaware. <laughs> unaware. Unaware, and without his May drama, perhaps. Oh, it's not really him. He's just uh, spoofed. <laughs> He's spoofing a guy you hate. Yeah. <laughs> Weird defensive mechanism, but let's let's go with it. <laughs> okay, so the D8s are radiant. Um, two of the... Uh, is it two or three D6s I needed for that poison? It was three D... Three D6 yeah, three, poison yeah, three on the D first attack. Oh yeah, so I need one extra D6. Hang on. Double check it, but I think it was three. It's a one. <laughs> Not that much. So, one d6 is um, slashing, okay. three d6 are poison, and the two d8s are um, radiant. radiant. What's the save on the poison? Uh, DC 11 con. Uh, is it half damage or no damage? Uh, half. Okay, so he's going to take uh, two Twelve. poison of damage. So that's uh, 16, 2 plus 2 plus 1. 21. Yeah, yeah. everyone concur? Yeah, yeah, 21. Sweet. Okay, anything else for you, Quetel? Uh, nope, used my bonus, used my um, action. I've got one more attack. Uh, you hit. I still have advantage for like the next 10 turns. You still hit. <laughs> Crit him. I took the poison off that arm because it only goes off on the first hit. Okay, so that is 10. Yes. That's, that, that's really, really shit roll. It is. That was utterly terrible <laughs> for what that could have done. The amount okay. of ones and twos through that entire thing. With the ones and twos. Okay. Anything else for you could tell? No, that's it for me. Kassar, my friend. Out of the way, skeleton. We move to there. And ping off two more shots at him. Okay. Uh, shot one. Is a hit. For 25 damage. Okay. And second shot. Also a hit. That showed us a one on the dice for me. <laughs> Stop! Shows shut a, up! Shows a ten on mine. <laughs> yeah, ten for me. How weird. Alright, so that will be... Eighteen. 18. Okay. 43 total. And uh, I'll, I'll shout him that he won't get away this time. He smiles. <laughs> and waves. No, there's no waving. <laughs> uh, we'll bring us round to you. Oh, sorry, assuming you've nothing else left, Kassar? Uh, I do have a bonus action, but I don't think there's anything I can do with it. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't have anything I can do with it. Okay. Okay. I am going to pull back one space into the corridor. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to cast Spirit Guardians, which will extend into the room as far as everyone except the two uh, skeletons that are in that alcove. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, I'm going to exempt everyone in the party, but basically a giant wall of sand with, like, spirits made of lightning flying around are just going to uh, come into existence. Um, Do you exempt Alora? Pardon? Do you exempt Alora, who stood behind you? Yes, I exempt Alora. <laughs> Uh, Bigger problems. God help me, I exempt Laura. Okay, so I need. Uh, what do I need? I need some sort of saving throw. Um, wisdom saving throw from all of those involved. So the skeleton and the orky necromancer. Oops, I don't know why it uh, rolled his roll to me. So he got an 18, uh, so and the skeleton got a 9. Okay, so the fail, uh, it's 14 DC, so it's half if you fail. Um, if you succeed, you mean? Yes, that's what, what I mean. Um, <laughs> it's half if you fail. <laughs> okay, I'm um, just checking how this the damage comes into this as well, because... When a creature enters an area for the first time, it always starts its turn there. Okay, and it, so this basically happens on the start of their turn again as well. Yeah, so uh, it's damage on your turn, and then on the start yeah, of their turn. Then, yeah. So, so it's eight and four. Okay. Um, and that So the eight is enough to uh, shatter the skeleton. And yeah. uh, as it does, uh, you'll see uh, some sort of energy flow out of it and into him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Everyone hit the orc! Nobody hit the skeleton! <laughs> um, yeah, and that's, that's my turn, I think. Okay. I don't have any other bonus stuff to do. I think it's round to clock. No, nope. I'm going to uh, come down here and then attack all four. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm sorry, my friend. <laughs> no, 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 you're no. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I'm still on a comeback. <laughs> yeah, you're you're raving, frothing at the mouth, Birdman. Thirteen won't hit. Good. And my next one. Oh, that will. Would, but I'm going to use Guardian Shield as the reaction, and so that boasts me up to 23, so that won't hit. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, we won't have a usual bonus attack against him, Clock. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, skeletons sit and uh, quiver. Yeah, they do. Duvar. You're currently in a sandstorm of. Odd proportions. Lightning spirits. Yeah. <laughs> There's ghosts flying it that are shooting lightning. But none of it seems to be touching you. None of the sand, none of the spirits, none of the lightning. You will have seen me do, do like, uh, the mummy in the uh, in the mummy movies and, like, lift up this wall of sand inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, and then I will attempt, if I can, to move to to to, to here. Because well, hey, why not? Use my plan, and I will attack uh, the York. Well, not who is he? No, he's a what is he? He's an orc. Necromancer. The necromancer. Uh, with um, yeah, with flurry blows, let's give him an extra uh, extra bonus attack. Yeah, wacky. Yeah. Okay, so that's four attacks for you, Duvar. Let's see if you can do anything with them. 
Let's see if I can actually hit anything this time. Right. That's a negatory. That is a hit. Way. Wow. Okay. Noise of damage. That's a six. Next, uh, next, next attack. Mm -hmm. That is a one, which is an eight. And the uh, third one. Okay, that's twenty two and a uh, damage, which is an eight. Um, last but not least. <coughs> it was definitely a lead. Yeah, you uh you you ring Crittell's helmet with that blow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Anything else? Yeah, uh, no, that'll be it. That will be it. Okay. And now we begin. Show me another wisdom saving throw, guys. <laughs> You'll get your wisdom saving throw, do not. Uh, uh normal. 23. Flame, he takes half, so he takes 6 points of radiant damage. Okay, so the first thing uh, you all see, although it will have special significance to Kassan Cluck, is uh, you will see him take out a familiar dagger. Oh no. And that dagger. He will run it across his hand. How many points of damage does he take? <laughs> he doesn't seem to be being hurt by what he's doing. It's a bad, bad thing. It is a bad, bad thing. The second thing that will happen is a sphere of energy will ripple out from him. And I would like everybody to now make a constitution saving throw. If you have advantage uh, of saving throws against magic, now's time to use it. Nine. Nine's not going to cut it. No, I didn't think it would. Twenty-two for me. <laughs> Six for me. Ooh. Ooh. Six. Yay. Okay, so the good news is Duva and Ulfa passed. So you will only take half damage. <laughs> okay. Are you ready to wince? Yes. A little bit. <clears throat> <clears throat> Fucking hell. 34. So Kassar, Cluck, and Gretel will take 34 points of uh, necrotic damage. And uh, uh, I take uh, half to the, of that. Are you uh, resistant to necrotic and radiant? Good man. Okay. <clears throat> that will help you. Uh, I think. I would just double check, but I don't think our skeleton friends are uh, immune to that, so they're also going to make some saves. So I take 17, that's right, isn't it? That's half. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. is question 17. Okay. So the two skeletons fail, and uh, they both die. Recharging him. Um, yeah. And their essence flows into him. That was fun, wasn't it? Oof. Okay, we need to kill him this round. <laughs> um. Okay. So from, 
from looks, David, just as a mm-hmm. question, um, I would notice that both Kassar and Cluck look pretty bashed up just looking at them. Would that be fair to say? Y- yeah, like, yeah, those two. Uh, everybody else looks kind of okay, but those two don't look great. Okay. So, Kassar. Critel next, isn't it? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, leave me alone. I would like you to make a acrobatics check. Okay, give me two seconds. I accidentally hit all my tabs. I am quickly loading back in. Acrobatics, you said, yeah? Acrobat- oh, okay, don't fail me now. Okay, the good news is you were able to escape the grasp as you are grabbed from behind. <laughs> Yay! And when you turn around to see who it is, it's a it's familiar done. face. <laughs> oh my god! It, it, no. it, it looks like a ghostly apparition of your former friend Ganvix. It's, oh, it's only it's like a level 2 ghostly apparition, surely! It's the reanimated corpse of Ganvix. Technically not a corpse. He's purely um, spiritual. Okay, does he does he exist in his own right? Like, does he's technically have a turn? Did yes. he just start his turn in my giant lightning storm? Uh, yeah, I'd say technically he does. Yeah, then he would like like a wisdom save off of him, please. <laughs> uh, now, how, now to remember how Jason built that character. Yeah. What do you mean? Quick. He had, ter- he had terrible wisdom. I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Minus two. <laughs> Again, Vix was not a wise, very un, um, uh, perceptive rogue. The still passes, so he takes half damage as radiant. So he takes seven points of radiant. If he, if he's got issues with radiant because he's undead, then other things you have to work that out. <laughs> He seems to be okay. He seems to be unfazed. He's just sort of like cocked his head slightly at Kassar. Yeah, well, to be fair, I haven't actively attacked him. It's just he's standing in a giant lightning storm that I haven't exempted him from. (laughs) I am going to use Green Flame Blade. Okay. Oh shit! I forgot to do some. Too late. No, this is very important. Too late. No, nope. it's very, very uh, important. <laughs> nope. Yep. Not to us, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. Somebody else. Somebody forgot to make a constitution save for. Oh, <laughs> Laura! Yes, yes, please, please, kill her for me. Oh, oh I uh, can't kill her myself. Does it go my through walls? So happy. Yeah, it's sort of like. She, she, she's standing in such a way that she's kind of looking what's happened. And yeah, she gets caught in this as well. So, uh, oh. what was that? 34 points? Yes. Of... Die! 34, 34 yes. Uh, Alora's knocked out. Yes! <laughs> and because half her bitch. face was looking around the corner, does she look like Two-Face now? <laughs> <laughs> It's fine, we're going to find her a mechanical it's face. It's necrotic energy, Oh, go back and teabag her. <laughs> I'm concentrating on a lightning storm right now, but later, I'm sure. <laughs> That's yeah, a very good concentrate. point. Anybody who's making concentration spells, please make sure you've rolled your constitution saving throw. Yeah. Okay. Doing that now. So I got an 18. Uh, so it's half the damage you took. So I got a six. So <coughs> an eighteen would be a pass because a seventeen. Okay. Your D- DC seventeen for you, Ulfar. I, it's t- I think it's going to be ten. So uh, your your sandstorm has dissipated. Okay, it falls down. Yeah. That's fine. Which uh, yeah, Gambix would have appeared in it. So is it if they appear in it? Yeah, as long as their their turn starts, like either the first, the, as soon as they appear in it, or their turn starts in it, it takes. The, yeah, as long the, as it's if they appear in it, because uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, sorry, Critel. Sorry, we had some very important things to sort out then, including the, de no, the death right. of a very, um, very beloved NPC character, which everybody's going to be <laughs> devastated about if they don't save her. So I sad. liked her. Yes, <laughs> she's very important for the future plot. I hope she lives. Alright, okay. <laughs> Kisar, you, liked, you liked using her. I don't think you care about her in right. your state. Because of advantage, I rolled 11 and a 12. Okay. Uh, good news is Cretella 12 still hits. He has not put up his mage armor. Cool. What say everybody that after after we um, after we beat this thing, we uh, just grab Kazar and just drag him out, leaving her behind. Actually, it would have been higher than that. It's plus five to hit. Plus two I'll, is my um, I'll kill damage you first. <laughs> you can't kill him. He's your friend. Well. <laughs> Colleague, well, acquaintance, <laughs> <laughs> the lost puppy who just wouldn't stop following you. Yeah. He would happily stop following him. It's not here for him. Right. Uh, the D six is slashing. The D eight is fire. A grand total of one. Six damage. Ooh, big numbers, Quetel. <laughs> and because it was green flame blade. It counts as using a cantrip, which means I do not get a second attack off. But you do get a bonus action for a spell. If you have any slots left. I do. As as a point of memory, guys, just out... Kassar and Cluck, how good are you guys at healing yourselves? <laughs> like, respectively. Middle to um, average. <laughs> healing? I don't need no healing. Um, I've got However, a couple of, nothing I've got, I've got there is that but... useful. I, like I've got some healing, but basically I it, it, I I can probably only heal one of you next round. And now now all far. I would remember mm -hmm. maybe if what you their if, healing if, had been like in the past battles. You were generally uh, more thinking... you were generally more intelligent than all far, and you don't yes, remember, so therefore he can. <laughs> that's true. That's very <laughs> fair. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Anything else for you could tell? Uh, no, nothing else. Okay, a uh, a melted, more melty than usual, rotting Kassar. Now face to face with your old acquaintance. Somebody who you bled together with. Horrified by what's in front of me. Um, I am actually going to... Um, so f first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reach into my, reach into my pouch and drink a potion. Um... So I go drink the potion of heroism, which I've got in my equipment, hmm. which will give me ten temporary hit points. But for the sake of this, can I just add ten hit points back? Uh, no, you had to add them as temporary. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, I figured out how to do it. I'm fine. Yep. And it also gives me the bless spell for the okay. next hour with no concentration required. Okay. And uh, I am going to run away. <laughs> potion <laughs> of heroism. I run away. Uh, you, will yeah, yeah, yeah. An from, you will provoke Horrified an attack from. You will provoke Horrified by the visage from, of my uh, dead colleague. Yeah. Opportunity attack. Yeah, he stabs you in the gut as you leave his control. Okay. Unless you do disengage. He's uh, drunk a potion. I've drunk a potion. Yeah, you can't. Are uh, you not high enough to have it as a um, bonus action? No, I'm only rogue level one. Remember. It's okay. Yeah, he wasn't that he good with his daggers. <laughs> <laughs> That's never how it was. Never but, will be. Rightly so. He's a level two or something, rogue. He was <laughs> level two. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna just accept that he is until proved otherwise. <laughs> He's like a level two rogue ghost. I'm gonna run past Clark and say, "Ganvix is here. Ganvix is alive. I think something. <laughs> He's here." <laughs> and uh, at that point, I think. Um, I will end my turn. Okay. What does actually? What does he count as? Because I would still. He would not that it mattered, but he would have had disadvantage if he was technically undead or celestial or aberrational or anything like that. If he's none of those things, then that's. Uh, fine. yeah, he'd be undead. Okay. Okay, so that brings us right round to uh, to you, Ulfar. 
Mm. So, just to recap, in the last six seconds, Cluck has charged at you and sliced at you. Uh, yeah. And then uh, you got hit by a, a wall of necrotic energy. And then you saw yeah. Kassar run across the room screaming about somebody's back, somebody's back. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I've seen the same wall of energy like crush Cluck into a tiny ball in the back of the room to a certain extent. <laughs> um, uh... Will he have noticed Alora went down? No. <laughs> I was con no. In fairness, I was concentrating on a lightning storm that just got knocked out by a wall of energy. Like I won't have noticed what was going on behind me. Like it's it's knocked my concentration. So uh, I also don't care about her particularly. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So dear. I am gonna cast guiding bolt on. Uh, on the orc fella. Uh, come on. So 21 to hit. Uh, it's a hit. Okay, so he takes 66. He takes 20 points of radiant damage, and uh, the next attack roll made against him before the end of my next turn has advantage because he's glowing with radiant energy. 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 I literally, I literally rolled more or less the most medium <laughs> yoka roll, like a like medium of the middle of the road roll for the damage on that. Um, oh, well. Um, and that is my turn. I can't do anything else. Okay. Clock. I'm going to move to there and then uh, continue to wail on the the orc. Whoa. I assume that doesn't uh, hit. That is a hit. Oh, wait, is it? Bloody hell. Is he still get? Is he still crit on it? Uh, no. 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 Okay. He's mage squishy. He really is. Nice. Oh. And then I will attack him again. For fifteen. Is a hit. And then for 10. Anything else for you, Clock? End of turn. Nothing <laughs> else I can do. Duva. Hello. How are you? Are we all having a good day? <laughs> <laughs> People's hit points say no. People, no? Okay. Your, your hit points say you're okay, Duva. Yeah, they do, don't they? Um, okay, well, I'm gonna swing a hit at him, and if I hit, uh, I don't know if I need to say it or not, but if I hit, I'd like to do a stunning strike on him. Okay, uh, you uh, do your hit first, then use your chi point. Okay, so let's see what we get. Yes! Oh, yes! No. You beauty! There you go. Uh, so you can use your chi point to add your stunning strike, which gives him a con saving throw in his future. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you feel lucky? And crit damage. And um, plus... Which he fails. He fails. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> your stunning strike has got us out of so much shit. <laughs> and yet everybody still hates him. Yeah, no, it's true. That's nothing to do with the stunning strike and everything to do with the character. So is that 1d8? 1d8 plus 3 plus 8. Plus 3 plus 8, thank you. Oh, God's sake. 
<laughs> oh, well. Okay. And uh, then we'll uh, just wail on what a bit more. What state does um, Stunning Strike put him in? He stunned. is now stunned. Um, I'd be very surprised if he put him in any other state. <laughs> stunning Strike puts him prone. Uh, where is it? This one. This is the one. So there he's incapacitated, can't move, and can only speak falteringly. He automatically fails de strength and dex saving throws, and all attack rolls now have advantage. Yeah, not that it matters, but you would have had advantage on your attack roll as well, Dubar, but oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't need it. Thank God, yeah. But you now uh, have advantage going forward, Dubar. You do. So let's smack him with advantage then. Uh, you hit. Okay, and that is just without the D8. Come on, there you go. Hits since I can need to, I need to work on his hits, don't I? Jesus. And a um, whole load of damage there at five. Yeah. Tons. It's gonna do a lot. Uh, uh, and for bonus, we'll hit him again. Why not? And that'll be it for Duval. Okay. Uh, with your last strike, Duval, you hit him and he explodes. Ooh. A dark cloud will fill the immediate vicinity, blocking out all light as you hear wails of the dead. Oh, he's gonna fucking. Fucking Dracula walk against the wind, this bullshit, and turn up again later. Fucking asshole. <laughs> He's gonna turn up on the clockwork machines. And Gamvix disappears with him. Mm hmm. Okay. So. Are we still in initiative or. Uh. Patience, patience. I'm gonna say yes. So, uh, Duva, so as you strike him, yeah, he, he starts to. Below, well, he explodes in like black clouds, wailing screams. Uh, that will take uh, a few seconds to dissipate, but when it does, uh, he is gone. Uh, the apparition of Gambix is gone. The skeleton remains are still scattered around the room, and uh, what appears to be his cloak and uh, what was inside his cloak appears to be piled on the floor. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but we're at the end of your turn. So now it will Maybe be not. a death saving flow for Alora. Crit fail. Does Alora, if she dies, does Alora have a twin sister by any chance? <laughs> okay. So uh, that is one saving throw made. One made, okay. As in, like, she's. I didn't say succeeded, and I didn't say failed. Okay, just done. Just done. Everybody block the, uh, the the doorway. Critel. So I'd say at this point, uh, we'll probably come out of initiative, but before okay. we all run run and, and decide what to do, we're just going to quickly just go through. Uh, so, as we end combat, uh, what is everybody going to do, starting off with Critel? I'll have a quick, just like, look around and see if everybody's all right. Okay. Uh, Clock, what will you do? Um, probably you pop a health potion quickly. Or two, just to regain some health. Okay, Kassar? I'll walk over to the to the robe and sort of pick pick through it just to sort of make sure he's gone. You know, like in, in the film, so down, someone goes over and like, yeah, 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 just like stamps through it and and I'm look for the effect. look for the dagger sick. essentially, like look through the items that are under the cloak. Yep. Uh, Ulfa. Um, 
with the the air of combat done, what is the chances that I would notice not looking at her that Elora is like damaged? Is she going to be making like noise of a dying person, or is she going to be entirely silent? Uh... Basically, if 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 for some reason I'd hear her behind me, I'd go and check on her. But otherwise, I'd forget she was there. I think. Your, your passive is perceptions. She's going to be looking at her wounds, going fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> your passive perception is thirteen, so I would say, like, you know, she's not being stealthy. You're probably aware of her presence. You might okay. not be aware she's injured, but you know she's there. Ah, whether she's injured or not is the crux of it. If he knows she was injured, uh... okay. Um... What can I roll for a niceness check? <laughs> D100. Okay, what, what are we saying the results mean of that? Uh, below 50, you walk into the room. Above, you look behind. Okay, no worries. But... Easy to roll D2, then. Oh, you are very concerned about Laura. Okay, uh, having noticed she's dying, I will cast Cure Wounds on Laura. Uh, but only at second level I'm not made of spells um, so 13 hit points she regains boo okay as she gasps her breath as you uh, as you restore her health I'll go it is all over and then I'll walk into the room to go and look in the chest come on point her, at least point her and say save your life <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just grab her like she's on the edge of a cliff. Save your life. <laughs> um, okay. No, yeah, I, I just, I just sort of like, I just like sort of kneel down to her and go, "It is all over." Um, okay, and I, <laughs> I walk over and start looking through the chest. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just to cover it, so, so Duva, sorry, what were you going to do? Uh, I was going to bend down, pick up the robe uh, that was on the floor, and uh, whatever's in the robe, just basically use it as a, a, a satchel and just pick it all up at the same time. That's what I was going to do. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll cover off. So as as you sort of prod at the robes, uh, you will find no trace of your arc assailant, although you will feel uh, this stuff there. Yeah, I sort of as like I said, I'll, I'll sort of have a look at what's in there. Okay, so as you pick through it, it appears to be uh, a a large amount of coins. A number of potions and a dagger. Okay, I'll uh, I'll try. I'll try to slight hand the coins, but I'll I'll pick up the dagger. Yeah, so, <laughs> when a large amount of coins. Yes, several coins. thousand <laughs> coins are piled upon <laughs> the floor. <laughs> 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 right, what about that? Duvar. I mean, I mean, you should make a roll just at the very least. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, like, he's an orc. How big could it have been? He's like one guy. Unless he was literally fighting us with this giant sack hanging off his ass. <laughs> it possibly was. Well, he had just been looking through the, 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 the stuff, so he might have had a bag of coins slung over his shoulder. Like, that's possible. Okay. All right, in, in, in that case, I'll just pick up the dagger and look through it if it's, if it's too big for that sort of activity. Yeah, so large stash of coins, several potions, and a dagger. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely pick up the dagger and start having a look at the potions and just tell everyone that I've found some coin. And yes. say, hey guys, I, I think this is uh, what he was making off with. Okay. Uh, so Clock's healing himself. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as, as everybody else seems to fight through the coins and all five goes to the back of the room, uh, the obelisk will start to glow with blue and silver shapes and symbols. Some are geometric, some are appear as script, some appear as pictographs. 
And at this point, Alora will move into the room with you. Fascinating. No, <laughs> she, she's not in a talking mood. No, she's, just, she's barely alive. Like, I literally just like, brought her back from the brink of death and just left her in a pile of wet. For that. Well, I'll take a look at the obelisk then. Yeah, okay. do, do I notice anything on the obelisk standing next to it that is obviously has any meaning to me? Uh, it doesn't obviously have any meaning to you. It just it's yeah. gone from being inert to glowing and displaying different shapes, symbols, okay. and, and other weird stuff. Okay. Clock's attention is now turned to the bag of shiny coins. Okay. Does that stop you from opening the chest all far? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. As you open the chest, a blue mist starts to flow out of it. Okay, I close the chest instantly. <laughs> uh, the blue mist continues to flow out of the chest. Oh, shit. <laughs> it is starting to coalesce uh, along the floor of the room you're in. I, I just like take a few steps back and I'm like, uh, guys, <laughs> smoke in the box, smoke in the box. So at this point, the obelisk will start speaking. Talking obelisk. <laughs> <laughs> Do we understand what it's saying? None of you understand <laughs> what it's saying. Laura. I love it. Looks up. And... Maybe. In a bloodied state. Um, I will. I will chuck another cure wounds at Alora <laughs> to make her more useful. Um, but I'll do it like sort of turning to her, like put my hand on her shoulder. What does it say? And as I do it, I heal her for uh, eleven points. Oh, damage. Okay, she no longer looks bloodied after that. Okay. And she will say that uh, I, I think it says speak. Uh, maybe speak enough. Okay. You 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 are the only one who possibly understand this. You must try and converse with the storm. She says and points to the chest that you've uh, let all this blue gas out of. That doesn't look so good. No, no, that Even is you. why... No, 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 that is that is why I'm hoping you will talk to the stone and can uh, <laughs> resolve this little um, problem. She will move forward towards the stone and she will start speaking to it, but she'll be speaking to it in common. Maybe. Hail, well, stone! Maybe try... What words do we know in the um, foreign tongue? We don't. <laughs> Did we not pick anything up from the altars or anything like that? I don't think so. Yes. If, if, if Duval has the ability to pick up languages from just reading it around the place, then sure. But, uh, yeah. You know, there's been know very, that. very like distinct lack of writing across any of the services has, here. Yes. I agree with you. There has definitely been any writing, and you wouldn't know how to pronounce it anyway because it's a foreign language. So, so, uh, so, so are, are you still like, who's still picking through like the 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 bag of shinies, and who's now turned to the obelisk? I'm, st I'm still at the obelisk. Uh, still on the coins. Would this work on the obelisk? Well. Yes. In that case, I use my last level one spell slot to cast Comprehend Languages and touch the obelisk. <laughs> okay. Uh, in a language you now understand, Critel, uh, you will hear the obelisk say, Greetings. Please continue speaking so I may work out a relevant translation matrix. I uh, turn around and say that's what it's saying. Um... To, like everyone in the room and um, it's ai none Hello. of you know what ai is <laughs> i speak i speak to it in aquarian 
So the creature behind the crystal wishes to speak to us. Yes, but it appears um, it needs to hear more of our words so it can actually figure out how to talk to us. Hello, Be Stone! It's very Be nice to meet you. My name Be is Ulfa. What other <laughs> words would you like to hear? <laughs> yes, I say, greetings, Ulfa. My name is Jorvik. Jorvik? Ah, we have read about you on the outside of this place. What are you doing in a stone? Uh, quick question. What's this blue mist? No. Yes, yes. Hang on. One, quest one question at a time, because I'm fucking jumping all over the place. Right. So, uh, what, what's a blue mist? How did you end up in the stone? Oh, uh, well. Mm -hmm. I, Hold on a minute. So, I'm, he will he, he, he will say to the blue mist, I am unfamiliar for what this is. Please allow me some time to analyze. And then turning to uh, whoever asked him, how he ended up in the stone, he says, mm. I was created in it. Okay. Ah, interesting. Uh, what is your purpose? Ooh, deep question. <laughs> he, he will say that, uh, I was created uh, long ago to take over the functions of this city. Who created you? The Intellectual Council. They are now within me. Is there an armory? Yes. Is there Can still you stand still? down any other clockwork mon? Robots that are nearby. Can you turn off the defences? He, he said. Hmm. So now, uh, while Jorvik's addressing you, uh, you'll see that the, the sort of the pictographic shapes that were appearing originally have changed, and you will now see several distinctive faces appear and meld as different questions are answered. And I'd like you all to make a insight check. Solid nine. <laughs> oh, actually, I'd love a disadvantage both rolling the same. <laughs> Twenty. Okay, so uh, Duvar, <coughs> Kratel. And surprisingly, clock. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Make that. Make that a twelve. Uh, <laughs> no better. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so uh, surprisingly, you all get the feeling that uh, the the sort of the faces that appear and address questions, are sort of not just representations. You think that that's part of whatever this is. Now, uh, in in the answer to your thing about clockworks, uh, your vehicle will say, "Hmm, odd." It appears our startup was interrupted and our mechanical failsafe was disabled. I have limited control of the city and as a result most subroutines are acting under their own automation. This includes city defence and security subroutines. You should be careful when traversing the city further. I like this bluestone Jorvik. He seems nice. Have you had any more time to think about this mist yet? As I probably notice it getting quite a lot more. <laughs> he says yes I have analysed it with my local sensors I believe it to be a poisonous gas that is emanating from that chest how it do got you know there how to stop I do it? not know do you have an air filtration system you can turn on <laughs> that's a deep question from Cluck <laughs> <laughs> Ign ignoring the fact that Cluck has just gained uh like knowledge of uh, technology far beyond his simple, <laughs> feeble mind. Uh, Jorvik will say that uh, most of the city subsystems are acting on automatic, including uh, any, any uh, I can't even think of the word, any atmospheric uh, settings. And now he, you, he's, he's sort of trying to dumb it down enough for you, you, you get the sense of, and every time he's trying to explain a concept... The pit, like the faces, will change into pictures to try and help you understand. 
How do we um, give you back control? Uh, he will say that he's unsure. Uh, his consciousness only returned. Or there, so he will say our consciousness only returned a few hours ago, and we are still uh, still trying to contact several of our remote subsystems. You David. said this, this was a city, so where is where is the remainder of your city? They perished long ago. We are all that remains. David, how do we get into the rest of the city? Got to reboot the system. <laughs> Sorry, all far. Um, I was gonna say the room we're in um, mm -hmm. is like is like a, just a plain ceiling. Kind of domed. Yeah, no holes in it though. No, and the mist seems to be heavier than air, so it's clinging to the bottom of the roof, uh, bottom of the ceiling. Okay, so it's like it's risen above us, but it's no, 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 it, no. Uh, it's sticking to the floor. Sticking, sticking to, the to the floor. floor. That's what, okay. Okay. Um. Does this seem like the sort of thing that might be like a trap? The, like the what's happening is it something that during the, our adventuring that we might have seen something similar the the, the gas oh yeah the, yeah. Ga the gas feels like a trap okay so, especially as he's pointed out it's poison Can we yeah. pick up the chest and throw it in the water um i don't think i want to touch the thing that's spewing poison gas um get the turtle to do it he can hold his breath yeah. I'm I'm just gonna heft the sack of coins and say, uh, so should should Sorry, we be but... heading out? Yovig will say that uh, that uh, despite the dangers, uh, you should remain. There is much uh, they wish to discuss with you. We're well, gonna have to make it quick because we are uh, we are breathing creatures, and if this poisonous gas gets in our lungs, we we will perish here. Uh, Laura will ask him, "What are you really?" Uh, Jorvik will respond. I am Jorvik, a Itrium Organic Rapid Visual Indication Guide. And she says... Cogni, Cogni Neutron Wrangler of Psychoronicus Club. She, she, she goes, what, what is that? And <laughs> Jorvik will say, I predict the future. That was one of my primary functions. Oh! Oh! What race has made up this intellectual council? He says, uh, It was the race of this city. I believe you know them as gnomes. Can you, uh, can you predict his future, pointing at Kazar? Uh, he, he will say that uh, I need much more information about, uh, about current things and this individual to make any accurate predictions. Incomplete, uh, incomplete information uh, will lead to a high probability of failure. Okay. David, do mm -hmm. I believe if I blasted a sixty feet long, ten feet wide blast of wind directly at the like creeping mist that I could like disperse it to a point where the poison would be non-existent? So the the chest is continuing to spew poison throughout this entire time. So yeah, uh, you so feel like you're thinking if I blast wind into the room and like so that it just all sort of spreads out through the room, room all over the place, would that like make it? Inert? It's kind of spreading out all over the place on its own. So okay, and so there's just too much of it. Yeah. This is a, okay. Basically, this is a time limited event. Yeah. Caused um, by Ulfar's greed. Um, um, they're going straight into the chest that uh, old Levant can, was can uh, coming out of. So can only predict things that he knows about. Um, can we ask him what predictions he can give us that he knows enough about? And maybe he can give us some insight onto into. Um, current events within the city. 
he will tell you that uh, the current state of the city uh, is as foreseen. It's, uh, long ago, be long before uh, even. Uh, hang on, I lost my train of thought. So he will say uh, the city is a result of a uh, a war, a war with the humans. And that uh, to stop the humans, they had to destroy their own civilization. But, what uh, the humans do? Uh, he will say, before the humans arrived, the race of this world lived in relative peace. Uh, the world was young and virile and much different than what you know now. And it will illustrate the position of uh, the planet in relation to its star and... It's kind of like, you kind of get what it's trying to convey, but it's it's like, it's a technology beyond you for most part. But what is most striking is that there's only a single moon in orbit. And he will say, this was our world, as it was several thousand years ago. And the image will then zoom in and you'll see uh, a much different planet uh, with lush jungles, forests and uh, cities of uh, technology. And uh, you'll see like stuff like uh, clockwork automatons, like uh, digging tunnels and constructing things and stuff like that. Then, and uh, this illustration will then change to show how a second move arrives in orbit and several darts uh, leave it and land on the world. And you'll say, then the humans arrived and started their conquest. And then you'll be presented with further images of humans in uh, what appears to be advanced armor with weapons and vehicles of destruction. Like, just obliterating everything in their path. So, so what, what that, did you think humans what... came from a different world, essentially? Yes. Mm. And he'll say, what's more is their vessel destabilized our orbit. And he will show uh, how the second moon's interacted with the orbit and it's become more elliptical. So essentially it's no longer circular. And uh, it goes through several thousands of revolutions around the sun. But you can see it's getting further and further each time. And he'll say, very soon our planet will be thrown into the void unless it can be stopped. And then he, 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 he uh, further illustrates that by just showing the planet leaving the, uh, the effect of the sun. And... Uh, disappearing into the black okay um david i'm going to attempt to cast mending on the mechanism inside the the lock of this uh chest that creates the poison trap so as to stop the flow of poison is that something you would let me do <laughs> sure make a arcana check to see <laughs> how well you do it Crystal's been to be floating fair, out all this information, and yeah. he's just been thinking about the chest. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, he's a man of practicality, sir. He's ignored everything the stone has said. Yeah, at um, this point, Alori is trying to write down absolutely everything as quickly as she can. It's like okay, you've never David, seen her move so much. Given, given yeah, that I'm a cleric, the poison. <laughs> David, given I'm a cleric, should it be religion rather than Arcana? Nope. Magic. Uh, no. you're you're trying to fix a magical device, Arcana. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was magical. Okay. Uh, okay. He's a necromancer that planted a poison tree. I would 15. say uh, you have managed to stem the flow somewhat. You think you've bought yeah. yourself twice the amount of time you previously had. I want to ask it. So, what did okay. what did your city's destruction do to to stop the war or stem the tide? So uh, he will say, when it became apparent we would lose the war. The races of this world banded together to build an item of last resort, and it shows you images of what appears to be, essentially, a a, a bomb made out of odd-looking materials and, and glowing runes. We would have to give up everything to survive, and then a, a large pulse is emitted, and as the image zoom out, you see it covering the, not only the world, but the moons, and then pictures of technology failing, like a vehicles crashing out of the sky, and the sort of human armor and weapons no longer working. Uh, is, and then he will continue with people everywhere suffered, but they survived. And then it will show different races sort of climbing out of the ruins of civilization to start again, building out like gone from like steel and glass to like stone and wood and weapons of iron. 
EMP. I think. Um... So where is this? Uh, where is this? This. Oh no, they they made the bomb and it's gone. Okay. So what what happened to the gnome race? The survivors scattered. When it became, sorry, I, I was say, uh, afterwards, after civilization started to reform, the humans attacked again, this time with much more crude weapons. Our people saw that uh, we could no longer survive here, and the Council of Intellects decided the only way to, uh, to survive and see out to the end of their plan was, uh, was to meld their minds with me. Jorvik. They are inside me now. The transfer was not easy, and sadly a few of our friends were lost in the process. But sacrifices Jorvik. must be made if we were all to save from the void. Jorvik, can you be brought away from this place, or are you integral to it? Interesting. I have not considered leaving before. We will have to leave shortly, if for no other reason than we will run out of passions. You are welcome to come with us, if we can extract you, that is. Perhaps. So there is an item of importance you must take with you. Which is? To prevent the void... Uh, sorry, to prevent the void, an item was created. Before we destroyed our technology, we saw this future and the potential and created Project Rock. And where is this device? So it will show you images of several humanoid cultures of different races building small intricate ring shaped objects. And you'll say, each race contributed a part of their very essence to the project, so that our descendants would be able to act at the right moment, in the name of all people. Unfortunately, the chaos that swept the world in the aftermath meant all knowledge of this project has been lost. All except ours. Okay, where where should we start to look? How many ring shaped objects are there to to that were created? Thirteen. I have a list of them here for you. Would you like to see it now? Yes, please. Do you want to know more? <laughs> Each race uh, would contribute part of their strength and a ring. These rings, when built together, would create a rod. That, when when we forged and taken to the relevant location, would be able to prevent this uh, this this world from leaving its sun. These are the rings of vigor, finesse, fortitude, thought, foresight, perfection, blood, bio, instinct, growth, endurance, cunning, and variation. Yeah, um, can you just copy and paste that out <laughs> Or you can repeat it. I've got most of that. <laughs> I'll send it to you afterwards. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> he will say, the ring of fort was created here. And it is still stored here. Well, Where is it stored here? In the main control room. How do we get to it? Is that the room directly south of us? With the big console in the middle. Return to the main control room, and I will assist you. Please take care, as as I said earlier, the city's security is unautomatic, and I am unable to assist. Oh, okay. And after, after all of this, Laura will just go, Fascinating. Fuck. Where is the gas up to at this point? It's probably about boot high, and right. it feels heavier than oxygen. Uh, and yep. it, it's almost as if you're wading through it. It's like it has a resistance to your movement. Do we want to check the other chest just in case, or are we good to go? Good well, to go. If, if you express an idea of that as Kassar, I will suggest... Um, that was wholly your, in character. Yeah, with your skill set, if you want to look, I will support this choice, but I would be very careful. All right. Can I uh, 
I, I will also express I'm, to you. I'm going to try it then. Yeah. The Ex trap on the first chest was magical in nature. Expecting a trap. Can I use my thieves' tools and try to uh, to sort of disarm it and see if I can find out what it is before opening the second chest? Uh, you can make a uh, dexterity check with uh, proficiency with your thief tools. So that would be a d20 plus 8? Uh, plus your dex plus 3? Yeah, yeah, plus 3. Actually, no, I get double proficiency for thief tools, so it'd be plus 11. Uh, plus six, plus whatever your dex bonus is. Five. Yeah. So, yeah, 11. Fifteen. Oh, 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 that's what I got to fix, to sort of half fix the other one. Uh, you're fairly certain uh, that uh, you've disarmed the trap. <laughs> All right, okay. On a 15, that's, that's not bad. All right, I will, you're, uh... you're, you're sure. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Yeah. While they're doing that, I will um, ask Jorvig if it's possible to um, return his control if we go back to the um, main con. He says, uh, potentially. I, I was in the uh, midst of a startup process uh, several hours ago when my uh, when my power was dis was terminated. This has damaged several important subsystems. Control might never be restored, but one must hope. All right, so I'm I'm going to sort of slowly pry open this this chest. Uh, it is empty. Okay. All right. All right. All right. It's empty. Everybody out. Okay. I'll give everything out as we go. I will, I, before I leave, I'll stand before Jorvig and I'll say, Jorvig, do you want me to to bring you with us? What, what, do you, have you decided whether you want to leave this place with us? You're talking to an obelisk like twice the size of you. He yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. I, I have seven intelligence. Okay. He will I say, I believe my God protects me. I believe I can move an obelisk. <laughs> okay, okay. So he will say that, uh, that, uh, he has uh, partial control of the facility. And we'll be able to join you at the central control room. Okay. Maybe port yourself into something smaller. And uh, yeah, so just to, I've I've taken a note that I've picked up um, his cape, dagger, potions, and some a sack a, of coins. A measure of gold. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, presuming you all move uh, to uh, what you have correctly. Uh, determined is the control room. Scroll down! How long were we talking for? Mm, probably about 10 minutes. It was a quite good in-depth conversation and he used quite a lot of terms you're unsure about and he had to describe in detail, especially to Clock and Ulfar. And I've yeah. still got 50 minutes left of my comprehend language history. Yeah. Oh, he's speaking common now. Yeah, he's worked out how to talk to us. Yeah, but there's still going to be other languages in here <laughs> written on yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. So once we, once we get to this safer place and walk in, I'm, I'm going to heal some of my wounds a little bit with the cure wounds at second level. Okay. So as the first person approaches the, uh, the, the console, what was previously a map will have uh, your Vig's faces appear on it. Ah, oh, Jorvik. Greetings. Greetings. This is where the Ring of Fort is kept safe. And where how do we kept? retrieve it? I can release it for you, if you are willing to undertake this work. There are those amongst you who come from our ancient enemy, and it would be understandable if this action was not to your liking. I left the Empire some time ago. Which one? Which ones of us are you referring? I think we're talking about the humans. The humans. <laughs> the, the causes of all our woes today, including the current climate of this world and the current predicament placing the planet. I'm only half human. I I will 
I, I believe this is the reason I was brought from the desert by my God to save the world. I, I am willing to undertake this task. Good and evil comes in all forms. I left the Empire quite some time ago because uh, what they do isn't right. Yes, but we're not talking about the Empire here. <laughs> I'll look at I'll, I'll look at Duvar, even though I can't see him, um, and, and say you obviously don't know the Empire. Your your Vig, are you happy to leave the ring in our safe hands? He will say yes. There is one slight problem. Pardon? One of the more lethal of the security mechanisms is active and I cannot disable it. And at this point, through the rubble in the corridor to your right, a uh, oh, a giant, giant glow. clockwork monstrosity will uh, sort of like, know, Alpha, don't move. <laughs> will will emerge. Uh, I'm oh not God. in any shape to deal with this. Um. Oh, <laughs> Jorvik will say, uh, as this thing approaches you, uh, very quickly. Well, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have a look at that card, and I'm gonna, he's gonna decide what the most important thing to tell you is. He will say that, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, this isn't good at all. He will say that uh, you should do your best to survive while I attempt the proper shutdown sequence. <laughs> <laughs> this where Duvar this... goes, Clato, Brad, and Nicto. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, sir. <laughs> do, what do you mean, Clato, Brad, and <laughs> Okay, and at this point, I would like everybody to roll for initiative. Oh, dear. Hey, at least Jorvik warned you about it. A little bit too late. As it came out. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe somebody shouldn't have restarted him during his boot-up sequence. That's all I'm saying, Critel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the time it was necessary, we could have been doing that puzzle for nine years. <laughs> Otherwise... <laughs> Uh, I will. I will have a Laura roll because. Uh, yeah. She's going to die. Yeah, she she probably should. Well, good luck, Cluck. Oh, I can't. I can't hit robots. They don't do. I don't do anything to them. Hey, you have a blood lost one. I've used it. It's gone. Okay, uh, Cluck, you are the first to react to uh, the changes. So, uh, yeah, just to describe it. Huge metal, metal, uh, glowing with electricity, including electric fists. Uh, it's about three times the size of the other protectors you fought, and uh, yeah, he looks pretty badass. I'm uh, immediately going to uh, shout over to Kazar and say that I am completely ineffective at this creature, but I uh, don't know if it's worth trying to pry some of these crystals and then throw them at it and blow them up. And I'll Lightning start. heals these creatures. Do you not remember the other ones? He just yep. sees explosions. I just see yeah. explosions. You're a warrior, get in there. <laughs> I do nothing to metal. I just, just need up. to slow it down long enough for Jorvik to shut it down. Now, Clark proceeds to pick up a lure. <laughs> <laughs> throw in the, throw in the path. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were all like miles down in the initiative, so we couldn't actually stop it. You are going to do that? Throw into the damage path. <laughs> That's collateral. Oh, uh, it's tempting. <laughs> Why are you trying to get her killed? She's not that bad. 
she's pretty over. <laughs> she's my, she's minorly annoying, and everyone's exactly. like, right, Fearless she deserves annoying. absolute death. No, you you seem to love her. Everybody else seems to hate her. So she gave me a new hand, man. You, I owe her. It, it might just be because you love her. <laughs> Love's a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to remind our viewers at home what she looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. Yes. <laughs> Love is a strong word. <laughs> because, oh, you've been in the Empire, so you didn't, you, you've seen how much ugly stuff is around. That's beautiful to you. The Empire is full of human women. You know that, right? <laughs> like, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen human women before. <laughs> this, is not, this is not a brand new thing. <laughs> Would I be able to pick up this pile of the old scrap robot here? Uh, and sort of pretty to throw it? sure. Uh, like, and any anything of use has been taken out, so you'd just be throwing like bits at it. Uh, you're, you're certainly welcome to try. You can do anything you want, Cluck. You're a hero. Sometimes a bit uh, evil, but you're a hero. Cluck's gonna pick up. Cluck's gonna pick up Allura. Have shout, I'm sorry. Weapon? And then I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to throw into the damage path of the robot. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you can shove her. Uh, so, uh, da -da 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 -da. Hmm. you make a strength athletics check contested by her athletics or acrobat. Yep, I'm going. 25. Whoa. Yep. Oh. oh, shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can shove her. So, uh, yeah, you're going to push. You can either knock her prone or push her five feet away from you. Uh, you can't pick her up and, 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 and throw her, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, you can get her to where the dead robot is. Yeah, yeah. I, can get to, I can get to the dead robot. She, she's a dwarf, but dwarfs are not light. She probably weighs similar to, like, Cluck, I would say. Tell, tell that to the guy who threw, threw the, the human that threw the dwarf across the chasm. <laughs> now, it's in a different realm. It does not apply here. Dwarf physics are <laughs> different. Cost so, yeah, me! I'm a dwarf. I will... Uh, I will... I'll tell the elf. <laughs> I'll give her a kick to there. Okay. And I'll... then will I... Do, 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 since I get two attacks, can I do it again? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, oh, it's not an attack. It, it's an no, action. it's your entire oh, okay. Yeah, it counts as your No, no, it, it's, a, it's a, a special melee attack. Yes, I can try and do it again. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. Uh, no, it's just an action. It says actions in combat, shove. Okay, so uh, under shove, it says uh, using the attack action, you can make a special melee attack to shove a creature. I rolled 26 for my next one. I think Cluck's going to have a good talk into after this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, like, however much Alpha dislikes her, he's not going to be okay with his choice of action. Okay. Then Cluck's turn. So Cluck pushes Salora in the way. And then the robot goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This was so much easier when I was Ares. <laughs> I would have been so on board with this. Okay. Oh. You secretly you are. <laughs> oh, inside! Inside I am! Okay, uh... So, uh... Yeah. So, the robot walks over to her and punches her with its uh, charged fist. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You, you brought this on yourselves. What? Uh, the, sorry, Cluck brought this upon us. I, I don't think we, that we Why can bear any of the blame. I Why don't, did reboot the I, system? I don't think any of you have been taking responsibility for Cluck's actions and trying to steer him on a better path. 
So you're all collectively that's... responsible for the horribleness that's about to happen to this woman. <laughs> so uh, she gets I hit. Think we I know do not the guy. think that's true. So she has to make a constitution saving throw. This is entirely on clock. <laughs> Which she failed. Oh, oh no. She instant, instant smush. Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> Plus oh, 48! So, sorry, that should be 4 d oh, oh. I was gonna say, Jesus Christ! Six, so, seven, eight, nine, 15 plus 15, so 30. Okay, so uh, she takes 15 bludgeoning damage and 15 lightning damage, and uh, he's punched across the room. Uh, landing uh, in a heap, unconscious, uh, <laughs> between Kassar and Duval. Uh, the Goliath then walks forward and punches Duval. <laughs> okay. And Duval will... It's on a 25. <laughs> well, that might be a... <laughs> <laughs> Duvar takes 16 points of bludgeoning damage from a normal uh, fist. So it's hit you with its uh, non-glowing one. Ouchie. I don't think I can do anything about that. Okay. Uh, Kassar, it is your turn. I turn to, turn to Clark first of all and say, what, what the hell do you think you're doing? And some warrior you are. And, uh... Well, it's us a little bit of time. Um... So, the first thing I'll do, I'll cast Zephyr Strike on myself. Um, oh, by the way, at this point, Duval looks very unwell. <laughs> yeah, very, very I, unwell. I'm going to cast Zephyr Strike on myself and just say to say to the others, we need to buy time. Um, just, just get out of its path, and with that, I'm going to pick up Allura, mm -hmm. uh, which would count as an action, right? Uh, yeah. Essentially, call it a grapple, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so while carrying her, you're only going to get half movement. Yeah. So how how do you do half movement in terms of rounding up or rounding down? Everything's always a round down in D and D. Okay. So I get. Fifteen feet. Ten feet. Ten, ten feet. So I get. He's only got three toes. Ten feet to there, and then I get. Uh, because Zephyr Strike gives me an extra 30. Mm -hmm. So you get another 15. So I get another 15. So I'm going to make it to 5, 10, 15. I'll make it to there. Take with it. Allura. Dragging her out of the fight. Okay. Bye time! Do that! Um, uh... Well, let's... Let's just try something, shall we? Let's uh, take a swing at him and um, attack. That's and, uh, the spirit. If, if I if I hit, I'll try the. I don't know if it'll work against the machine, but um, you're gonna uh, try and stun it, aren't you? You're gonna try and stun it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> don't know if it'll work against the machine. What's the wording again? Because I can't remember if it says anything about size or against constructs or anything like that. It doesn't say anything like that, I don't think. Let me... Press that. Yep, it doesn't say literally anything. No, it doesn't say anything. The only thing it could mention is key, which does a machine have key? I mean, it's got electricity. Yeah. Now you've got key. Yeah, but it says he interferes with the flow of key in an opponent's body. Hmm. So does key equal electricity in this? In this? Um... Why don't we find out together? Why don't we find out together? Right. Okay. Fine. Let's uh, let's swing it in and see if I completely miss a completely. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Crits. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Jesus. 
There we go, have some damage as well. So that's uh, 16 in total, yeah? Uh, plus, yes, plus 8, yeah. Okay, and uh, you wanted to make a constitution save? Yeah. Which it has advantage for. Uh, it fails! Oh, I don't know why it rolled initiative. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it must get two times. No, no! <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Okay. We'll see how well that worked on your turn, Duval. Are you gonna. Okay. Sorry, on his turn. Run, right, can I move away now? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what, 30 feet? Mm. Uh, don't you. Can you move more than 30 feet? Uh, no, you, you've 40. got 45 feet base movement speed. Because yeah. you're a monk. Because I'm a monk. He yeah. is a greedy little turtle. I am Which a greedy little turtle. Which means on a dash he can move 90 feet. I can. Uh, and he'll move around this corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, can uh, can he use a uh, this, the anointment on him to heal on this round? Or is uh, he, is no, that, that would be uh, instead of your attack. Full turn. Yeah. Yeah, that's an action. Okay. Quetel! No, I can't see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna walk in front of it and just hold my shield in front of me, uh, doing the dodge action to try and hold it in place, basic. Okay. Wow! Clock, take notes. Thanks. This is how Find a warrior. A hero. This is now how a warrior is supposed to act, Clock. I'm not a warrior. <laughs> no, he's supposed to be a samurai. They, it's not like they've got some sort of code of ethics or anything like that. <laughs> Let me get my, just get my Bushido book out, yeah, shall I? Yeah, I'm going to say some light reading for you. I want you to Wikipedia Bushido later. I'm brain damaged, so I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else for you, Quetel? Nope. Okay. Alora uh, will make a death save. Oh, shit. It's all right, I've got a. Got I've got with, no with healing wood. for her, so someone else is gonna have all to right. deal with that. Oh yeah, I can do that. I yeah. got a. Sorry. Ulfa. Um, I am going to bring about a sleep storm in this room, which is a twenty foot out from the center. Yeah, and basically, da, 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 the way that works is. The room is a sleet storm. The area is covered with slick ice, making it difficult to rain. When uh, a creature enters the spell for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it must make a deck saving throw or fall prone. Um, this is my... I'm hoping none of us get stuck here and get bashed by a robot. But, so, basically... Uh, uh, first turn. So, basically, everyone, including myself, needs deck saving throws. Why wouldn't you just cast it behind it? Okay, I will cast it. Too late. So, uh... No conferring. Yeah, this okay. The rules, yes, I'm just... No, no, yeah. that wasn't in character. That was just a legit, like, why would you cast it on I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. The, in I'll case tell it you gets why. past you. No, I'll tell you why, because I thought pretty much is like, it might pass its first one and then be out of the area. So I was thinking, like, yeah, we're just trying to time. If every single okay. round it's got to roll a deck saving throw. So yeah, everyone deck saving throws. Okay, uh, as the clockwork life is stunned, it automatically fails. Yes! So it falls prone. 14. Five, so I fall prone as well. <laughs> uh, it's a 14 DC, so pass. Cool. Because I took dodge, I make deck saving throws with a button. Go for it. Clark digs his talent <laughs> into the ice. I've got my own embedded clamp uh, crampons. I'm good. Cartel passes as well. Okay. Okay, so you're now prone in a sleep storm. Yeah. Every, beginning of everyone's first turn, they have to remember to take more deck saving throws. <laughs> Uh, 
So, I like yeah, the thought that you cast it. It came in. You went, oh no, what? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Literally, I was like, I was like looking at the robot and ice was going along the ground as I did. And I just wasn't paying attention. My foot slipped, sp splashed into the floor. Okay. Uh, are you doing anything else in your turn, Ulfa? I don't, uh, seeing as I've just fallen prone, I don't think I can. Really. You've got, you've got like, your movement. Uh, so I can get back up? Yeah, you get up for half your movement. Yeah, okay, then I will, okay, if that's only half my movement, then I will move the 15 feet, 5, 10, 15, there. Um, and that's the end of my turn. So, another deck saving throw, Clark. Okay, uh, so as we come round to Clock's turn, Yarvik will say to you, Kutel, that uh, your, your chances of survival, oh, sorry, your probability of survivals are dropping uh, by, by the second. <laughs> as a consequence, your colleagues' uh, probabilities of survival are increasing. <laughs> Yeah, how are you getting on on with stopping this thing? It is quite difficult. <laughs> no shit. Um. Oh, that's a cutness. Clock's gonna proceed to move. Uh, deck saving throw, please, clock. Another one. Yeah, you're still in yeah. the storm. Beginning of every turn, yeah. Till you get past where I am now. This is what you get for being a coward. Yep. You fall pro so you got you can get up and move fifteen feet to me. Uh ten feet. Ten feet, that's yeah. Which uh no you'd already moved ten feet at that point clock. Uh -huh. Okay. So where am I going there? Yeah. So you just stood up there. We yeah. Oh well, it's difficult terrain as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. I wasn't going to mention it. I was trying to be an arse. Yeah. Clock, you move five feet. But this, the floor is flat here. <laughs> it's ice. The floor is covered in ice. That's what I've done. He's made what it talons. really slippy. Yeah. Yeah, but on a five, your talons didn't help. Okay. Uh, the clockwork golem does nothing on its turn. Kassar. All right, so the first thing I'll do, I guess, is I will pour a healing potion down um, the neck of Allura. <laughs> that the only thing you put down her neck. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, did, you do not yes. get to speak you... at this moment. <laughs> yeah. So I'll use, uh, I'll use a potion of healing so on Allura. Can you uh, roll for that, please? Yes, just give me two seconds. I accidentally hit all my tabs again. No. <laughs> I hate that that button is right next to it. What button are you clicking? The X? No, the one set these tabs aside right next to the main tab. Alright, 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 alright. Oof. Oof. Okay, Alora will come to. We'll oh, sorry, it should have been 2d4 plus 2, but you can take the 1d8 and then just add another one to it. So come five. through, looking very weak and quite groggy. And she'll say, Your, your, your friend is. Uh, he's not a very nice person. He's a coward. And, uh,. I think that probably reduced his cut just that little bit more. But we have other problems right now, Allura, and uh, I'm going to need you to run away and, and hide, preferably, until this clockwork golem is dealt with. Don't think she can run. <laughs> uh, she will nod. And I will, I will drag her around to this point, around the corner here, and put her in this square. And as it is, I think that will end my turn. Oh, sweet. I can duplicate my cameras. That's really handy. Uh, 
it's so handy. Okay. Duva. Just before Duva goes, David, a question. Mm -hmm. Do I remember whether thunder damage also charged these? I can't remember because I know the lightning obviously does, but did my thunder stuff have the same effect when I used it before? We'll find out on your turn. Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> Do that. If you're talking, you're on mute. Hello, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Duvar's going to use his ointment to heal himself a bit. Okay. Which is 2d8 plus 2. Is that the last charge of your ointment? I've, it says I've still got two charges left. But I'm not entirely sure if that's true or not. No, I, th I think it's probably gone at this stage. I think you yeah, only I had three to right. start with. I think it was... F four to start with. 1d4 plus 1 doses of thick mixture. Yeah, you didn't roll very good, I remember yeah, that much. Okay. Right, okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll kill it off then. Okay. Use your last special bam. 411. Respectable. Okay. Um. And then I will continue to move back, I think. And light a torch. <laughs> uh, you can't light a torch in the same turn, I'm afraid. You've used your okay. item, your action, right? That's fine. Uh, it's, it's fine. You've got this some some bit of illumination in in that room, so. Okay. Kratel. Deck saving throw. <laughs> With advantage, I think, for you. Uh, uh, no. Won't be at advantage this time. Okay. Yeah, that would have just disappeared, just as he loses his footing. <laughs> oh, <Yep>. no. <laughs> Kratel okay. decks it. It's uh, use my action to get up, isn't it? Uh, uh, half of your movement. Uh, I'm gonna get up and go back into uh, my defensive stance. Though. <laughs> nobody saw. Nobody saw. <laughs> Can pretty much nobody did. They've all left the room. <laughs> yep. There's a reason for that. I, I would have stayed and fought if I was not the only one who could have just carried her out and actually healed the person who brought us down here because someone threw them in the way of a murderous robot. <laughs> You, you weren't the only person. I was stood right next and I was leaving anyway. I, I literally do not have nothing You're the, the other person who hates her. <laughs> I'm the other person that I hate her. Everybody hates her except for <laughs> you. Bar me and possibly Crittell because he's the only other good guy here, apparently. Hey, 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 hey. Ulfar doesn't like her. He doesn't like, he just doesn't like her as a person. He doesn't like have like animosity towards her. He just wouldn't choose to hang around with her. <laughs> Tux is doing all the deeds for you. <laughs> Tux is a good guy deep down. <laughs> deep, 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 deep down. No, 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 no. Yes, yeah, so no. the only possible person who could have helped him discover that long lost memory. He's tried to kill twice, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Dear. Uh, that brings us around to Alora's turn. And uh, Alora needing uh, no more, uh, no more steering from Cassandra will uh, take off moving and get to that. And brings us around to you, Ulfa. Um, I will. Yeah, I'm going to stand at the edge of my ice field with a readied action to hit the robot with the maul should it get past the two guys in the room. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm holding the bridge as the yeah. idea while the other two are giving the other two a chance to... Okay, so once it's killed Crittell and Clock... It's going to kill me. Yes. yes. Okay. That's the order of operations, yes. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Perfect. Clock! 
Dex saving throw. <laughs> Let's see how those talents do, boy. That's a fail. <laughs> and you fall on your face again. Yeah. You get up and you move five feet. Okay. Uh, if you've got an action if you want to take it, I suppose. If you've got oh yeah, you, you could do a dash or something, couldn't you? Yes. So you could move another five feet. Fifteen feet, because it'd be half your movement. Uh. No, Even ten feet. Terrain. Yeah, so you'd get to there Definitely for 10, you get to there for 10, and then you've got 15 because you'll be out of it. Yeah. I probably actually, also on my turn, just probably shout, get your asses out of that! The golem will stand up on its turn. Deck saving throw, please. Stand by. A deck saving throw, you say? Yep. Uh, is this a magical effect? No, it's literally ice on the ground caused by the magical storm. But the, the ground, the floor is ice. That's all it is. It's not magic. Ice. I've just uh, made the temperature of the room from a sleep storm go enough that it's... Based on his actions, I still think he gets advantage on that. Okay. So he passes, so he doesn't fall prone. He raises time. himself to his full height and towers over... I hide under my shield. Okay. <laughs> it brings its fist down on top of your shield, as if to squish you. Rolling a 17 to hit. It does not. Okay. Yes. Uh, having missed with its fist, it will sweep with its other hand in attempting to bat you against the wall. Sweep the leg. Rolling a 13 to hit. It does yeah. not. Go on, son. A block and a parry. Uh, Jorvig will say, I almost have it. I'm sure. Wait, sorry, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> you can just hear the, the, like a faint hiss of like steam released really somewhere in the facility. So I think. Well, so and the hurry up! I don't know how long I can hold this. <laughs> I'm gonna come down to here. Do brush out um, in the other room. You're doing well. And uh, <laughs> seeing that what's going on, I'm, I'll. Um, yeah, I'll use my bonus action to, to cast Layer's Prey on it. And just say, uh, I'm going to ask your Vig, how much longer do you need? Can you give us a Can you give us a time? Rough time's fine. Uh, your Vig will answer that, uh, <laughs> that that we don't know. We are working on it. Work. Harder, work smarter. How does he know he's almost got it? <laughs> Hit it with a whomping arrow. Well, that's actually what I was thinking about. But the whomping arrow is DC 10. Yeah, but does it... Uh, and it will count as magical because you're bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to try and shoot it normally. Uh, actually, I will sh I will shoot it with walloping ammunition. Why not? Yeah, anything that might slow it, stop it. That's what we're, ju we're just buying time. 25 to hit. Is it hit? <laughs> it passes its con save. Damn. <laughs> uh, but it also takes set, uh, that amount of damage, 22. Uh Magical damage. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no special parts of it. Uh, and it's all no part. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's all it's all the same damage. The Slayer's Prey, sneak attack, and then my standard damage. Magical. Okay. Uh, and then I'll make a second attack just with a normal arrow. And I'll use sharpshooter. Why not? 
for 19. Uh, uh, that is a hit. Thank God. I don't I like yet to think about it, then. but... Uh, so that is another 24 points of damage. Okay. No, uh, I'll set to control control. Just, just hold on a little bit longer. I don't know if I'll survive a hit if it actually hits me. <laughs> Grab it. Maybe it'll stop it punching you. That brings us around to do that. Grab it. <laughs> Grab it! Right, okay. Um, I'm gonna light a torch. Okay. Let's just start wandering around. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't know we're in this room. I know where we are now. Yes, you've you've um. left you've left Duvar alone. It's it's not a good thing. Normally he brings more interesting things to the fight. I'm gonna start calling it. Not his his name's changed from Duvar to Duvar the Wanderer. <laughs> um, we can get behind it, can't we? I'm not sure if that's a sensible thing or if we've got time to do it, but we can get round and behind it. I mean, yes, technically. It'd take you quite a few rounds to do that run. Not if he dashes. Even then, it's still... It, it, eh. and, and as you said, I, know, I don't know what that gains us necessarily. No, I'm still quite low on um, health as well. But that's not... Uh, probably good enough. All right, well, you know what? I've got nothing better to do. I can't see around, around the corner, so I can't see anything. Mm -hmm. No, it's just a good, it's just a good idea now. <laughs> now, no, David just said, uh, mm -hmm. I'm like, hmm. All right, okay. You're going to do this. So that's uh, from, sorry, that was from here. To there, to there. Um, to there. So that's thirty feet to that point. Oh, it's too far. Um, do I have a dash option in this round? Uh, yeah. So, you, well, you got you've you've still got fifteen feet of movement, right? Yeah, I have to have, yeah. And if you dash, uh, you would still have another 60 feet of movement. Okay. So... Not so slow total. <laughs> yeah. So there is 30. Mm -hmm. uh, and... And the other way is... Thank you. So we did that. To there? Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. So Javar's just gone. Yep. <laughs> to be fair, not entirely unsurprising based on certain other battles. Like, Javar just run off in a random direction. <laughs> it worked out for us against the Mind Flayer. <laughs> yeah, didn't he get attacked by an animated rug? He did. I did, but, that, but ultimately did. it all worked out for the best. <laughs> yeah, he did forget about the rug. <laughs> Critel. A deck saving throw. Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> you fail. <laughs> right, I get back up and I do the dodge action again and sit behind my shield. What does the dodge action do again? Uh, it gives me advantage on deck saving throws and gives anyone who attacks me disadvantage. Okay, so shouldn't you have had advantage on that deck nope, saving? No, because it wears off the moment my turn starts again. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. okay. Uh, Laura will continue running. And not knowing where she's going, she's just going to follow her do that. <laughs> yes, let the women go together. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, oh, meow. <laughs> Paul Farr, who's, uh, again, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but he's kind of lost his accent. That happened a session or so ago. <laughs> that was <laughs> fine. <laughs> My apologies, the accent is returned. It's all good. Um, I will he's only cast... pretending to be from the South. <laughs> I will cast Sacred Flame on this goddamn robot thing. It needs to make a Dex 14 saving throw. Again. Dex 14 saving throw. Yeah. It fails. So it takes 2d8 radiance. So it takes 4. Oh, God. Oh, okay. It slightly glows. Yes. Anything else for you, Alpha? No, no. That's, that's my turn all done. Okay. Clock. Um. <laughs> Help. <laughs> you just wait for Crawford to show up to save you again. <laughs> <laughs> just repels from the ceiling with crossbows. <laughs> yes, I don't think he'll be saving you. Not this time. Gambix is going to come out of the uh, woodwork and. Shut down the robot. <laughs> yeah, last time we tried to shut down Kassar. <laughs> and he failed. Shut it down, boys. I'll move 25 feet. That way. Okay. Anything else? That is all. Okay. Uh, the Goliath will make a, uh, a deck saving throw. Uh, fails. It fails! So it falls prone. And working its way back to its feet. Uh, okay. Its fists start to glow with electricity as it uh, attempts to punch Quetel. No, no, no. Disadvantage. Hiding behind my shield. 14. Misses. Brings down the other fist. 12. <sighs> I saw that 27. Yeah, we saw it. Yeah, the 27 arrived very early and the 12 arrived very late. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Okay. Seemed like an infinite time. As I'm going with a block and a parry again. Yeah, so as the... Well, no, so even better. As the final fist is about to land on your face, it stops in midair. The robot, uh, or the clockwork automaton, will uh, sort of straighten up, relax. The energy in its fist will dissipate. And it will turn around and, and start walking backward. I, I just pretty much dropped to my knees. I'd just be like, oh. <laughs> you know, just exhausted. I will, I will instantly let the uh, like the the sleep storm stop. <laughs> and I'll like so it doesn't fall to... over. It's on its way out. Uh, I'm gonna run to catch Cortell as he hits his knees. I was like, well, good job, my friend. Well done. But well, but well, well, so the uh, the ice instantly melts. Yeah, <laughs> it's magic ice. Yeah. yeah. Try into the room and ask ask Cortell how he's feeling. Yeah, we out of uh, initiative then. Bruised. Uh, you will be. I imagine uh, that you're still running around uh, unaware of all of this, dude. Yeah. Yeah, so you will just hear, like, it stomping as you get round there, but it will have uh, retreated at that point. To be I'm, fair, I'm going to quickly make say. Saving throws for, 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 running, <laughs> for running through the ice. <laughs> I just, I just want to say to quickly to uh, Gretel and Ulfar, while we're all in the same room together. I'm just going to say, huh, isn't it weird how it's the humans who stayed behind? Yep. We're supposed to be the bad guys. Yeah, Yorvik will say, e even the baddest of people may have redeeming features. Yes. Yay for Cluck! Let's not forget <laughs> that your ancestors murdered millions. My ancestors are not me. 
their actions are not my own. The same way I wouldn't blame you for any rogue gnomes. I don't even know who my parents are. Okay, so, uh, Cluck, uh, provide, uh, presuming that you, uh, were still in initiative and still running away from this thing, which direction would you go? Um, what, if I was to keep running? Yes, as in, if you was to take, continue taking your actions with no knowledge about what was going on. I probably would have just stayed here. I probably would have stayed, well, I probably wouldn't have kept running. Okay, that's fine. I was fine. just going to plan on hanging around in here. So in about a minute or so, Duva uh, will appear, and then Alora will appear about thirty seconds after him. So we, I, I reckon maybe a minute, minute and a half. I don't see her catching up with Duva particularly quickly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Given how fast he runs, she can, yeah, she can be quick when she's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> she's only forty feet behind him a turn. She's, ca <laughs> she's catching his slipstream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on average, that's going to be about half a minute. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you're probably fair. I just Jorvik will say, I have uh, successfully accessed its maintenance subroutines, and I have told it to recharge. That is. <laughs> your what happens then. when it recharges? Will it come back? I have disconnected the recharge mechanism. It will remain there. <laughs> ah, good man slash machine. I'll, I'll thing, walk over uh, to Alora and, and ask her, how, how are you doing? And my apologies for the uh, the chicken. She does not, not look good. not a noble action. I'll reach out and touch her on the shoulder and, and cast um, Cure Wounds. There's a, lot, there's a lot of unwanted touching going on, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. It should visibly yeah. heal some wounds on her, so hopefully... In the land, in, in the, yeah, we're me tooing Alora an awful... Oh, Four, God, Two man. hit points. <laughs> yes, she looks no different. Yeah, yeah I mo mildly. What helps level did you cast that at? Just level one. Ah, okay. I've got say. um, I've got two healing potions, so I'll throw her one and uh, yeah, give one to myself. Um, I'll I'll turn to the console and say, Jorvik, you are about to give us the first of the ring for this great endeavor. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. And then, as uh, as you remind him, uh, you'll hear noise from uh, from where you are to your south. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, uh, rising out of the floor, uh, a plinth will appear, and on top of it will look uh, like a uh, sort of a, a mechanical uh, ring in sort of the same sort of construction you saw on that bomb image uh, with glowing like a, rooms. Sort of the size of like a bangle or something. Yeah, like sort of like it, it, it's 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 small. It's like you could wear it on your finger. Okay, like a literal ring. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Um, I will I will take it off the plinth and I will inspect it. Uh, see if what I can gather of its nature. It feels, without any sort of check, innately powerful. Okay, and it's this is the thought ring, is what he said. Mm -hmm. The ring of thought. Yeah. Okay. Um. I, I put it on my finger because I'm a more Your brain explodes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Okay, uh, so uh, the Ring of Fort is a, uh, a ring uh, crafted uh, long ago. Uh, it requires attunement. Uh, while wearing this ring, uh, you will gain plus two to uh, intelligence. Uh, and this effect oh, can, yeah. can raise your intelligence beyond 20. You will no gain, chance of that. gain the ability to speak and understand Gnomish. You will okay. gain advantage on all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against magic. Okay. And you will pick up a gnome personality trait and flaw, which we will roll for after the session. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, don't get any of those things until I've attuned with it. Until you've attuned with it. But it's is now in your inventory. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Clark needed that for the intelligence. So did I. Your intelligence is like one worse than mine. If, if Clark even so much as went for the ring, I think that would have caused the mini mini civil war. Yeah, yeah. You're not in people's best books at the minute, mate. I think. <laughs> 
Oh dear. Um, I'm also going to turn and say I really need a rest after that. I think yes. we all do. I'll say, Alora, Alora, is there anything else you need to do to finish up here? She says, no, no, I think I've seen quite enough. I've seen some of the worst things. And she will look at Cluck and glare <laughs> at him. The worst things imaginable today. So, you know, yes, once well. mighty people reduced to terrible acts. I tell you, I don't have control of my actions. And we've learnt that uh, much, much danger awaits this world, and it's quite sobering. Yes, well, it seems like we need to gather these uh, these rings. Your Vic will tra uh, chip in and say, I have determined that I uh, can transfer uh, myself into this mechanism, and the, the sort of the obelisky slaty part of the uh, the console will stand up and says I wish to accompany you to assist in this endeavour I'll Rattel, pick it up. it's probably best you take it yeah I'll pick it up as you pick it up uh, it will uh, flash you an image and it says <laughs> uh, unsolicited dick pic well well <laughs> It will say, we must travel to these locations. Cool! We got a proper quest, I'm so happy. Do you have a quick way of us getting there? Okay. Like, um, so we are here. Yeah, that does looks like this, where we are. Does this, David, mm -hmm. does this match anything I saw in my book of exotic maps? Parts of it do. Right, okay. Okay. Jovic will say, I have limited locate, uh, limited information on the other locations, but uh, I know their names. These, um, these different place names, do I recognize any of them in Celestial or so, Sylvan? Uh, there are some, uh, but Jovic will just immediately uh, replace them with their uh, the, the, the common derivatives. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Okay. So... Uh, for the purposes of this, uh, oh, mate, I should have made better notes. It's a, it, to be fair, this is, it's not vitally important right now that we know the names of all these places. Yeah. So uh, he will flash up. Is any up. of these one that Duvar came from? <laughs> there, there is nothing that appears to be total in nature. Yeah. There, there is, uh, and, and Jovig will flash them up one at a time. Uh, but for the purpose of this, you can just ask me one and I'll tell you which one it is, but he will say the the races that were involved in the construction of the rings were goliaths, halflings, dwarfs, gnomes, arachokra, tieflings, orc, goblin, lizard folk, elf, centaurs, kobolds, and furblugs. Which one created which? And feel free to send me that information after the session. Yeah, we, we want the information, but there's no. Don't read the list. It's... Okay. Yeah. Just say that we wrote it down. And say, well, it, it appears the nearest one is to the north of us. We may have to chart a passage yes. off this island. In that archipelago. Uh, yes. He will say, that is Cald, home of the Ring of Blood. Ooh. On second thought, so we go south. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, south uh, Kassar you will uh, notice has like the Empire Heartland yeah north north is better north <laughs> is north is probably better what is the ring to the south mm, you will say uh, that is the ring of finesse that sounds much nicer than blood I'm just do, saying <laughs> do you know who made the ring of blood the Orkish peoples created the Ring of Blood. Ugh, Jovic will say, the, the Orcs you encountered today are nothing like the Elder Race. They went through uh, several changes during the interluding years after their loss of their technology. Do you know who it was who attacked you? Or attacked us? Do you have any information on that being? I do not. 
my my senses were uh, obscured. I could not get a a reading from this person. Before we leave here, could you guide us, if I'm carrying you, um, to the armory? Yes. Lead the way, Jorvig. Should we uh, rest and recover first, just in case there's more sentries? The, well, Jorvik, is there any more sentries currently in action in the Yes. Several hundred. Okay. Then, yes, yes. And rest. how many between us and the armory? I cannot determine the location of the majority of the sentinels. Okay. How many more of them are the size of that one? <laughs> and I'll point at the one that's wandered off, if it's still in range. Otherwise, I'll just mention like which one it was. 26. How long will it take us to get to the armory from a current position? At your current velocity, several hours. That's I mean, not so bad, but I suggest we do take a rest first. At the very least, yes. Mm -hmm. if, like, we, uh, that's if we don't... Alori, are you, are you happy to come with us? I will uh, do my best to protect you from the, the chicken. The chicken is very sorry. <laughs> so far you, she, you she failed was, both times, I think, haven't you? She will say, I saved her. What are you talking about? <laughs> she will say that she has little choice. Very true. Shall we? Shall we take a rest, everyone? All right. I would suggest long. Yes, I think that is smart. For reasons unknown to Clark, he will go over to Allura, and he will unheartedly apologise for his actions that he has no control control of. Inside check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Inside> <laughs> <check>. <laughs> This would be where I rolled a critical 20, and it's like, no, I do know what, I do know, do know what, what I'm doing. I think they're in like, checking to see if you're being truthful. Yeah, if you're oh. lying. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Laura wants nothing to do with you, and as you approach her, she will uh, visibly like shrink away. And start to stay close to Kassar. Oh, okay. Fortunately, I was going to leave two po potions of healing on the floor and walk away. Um, I would like a re rest, Laura. You'll you'll feel better if you if you uh, just have a have a rest. She will nod and sit down in a corner. I I will walk over to Laura and I say I will not let this, this sort of thing have a ch have a chance to happen again. This I swear by my God. And then yeah. I I'll lean I I'll lean down and I go, Would you like to have a look at the ring? Like I don't leave, give it to her. Like I keep my fists closed, but so she can see it on my finger. Yeah, she will start to uh, to jot it, like, and draw it, and uh, like she'll measure it and things like that. That's okay, and yeah, that's that's what I will do. As I am, um, sort of sitting down and, and beginning to rest, can I before I do so have a look at the dagger and the the dagger, the cape, and the potions, just mm -hmm. to figure out what they are and figure out how much money there is. Okay, uh, so uh, the dagger uh, looks uh, jagged and ornamental. Uh, it does have a like a deep sense of like it's been used for very nefarious purposes in the past. Yeah. And it, it, it it does not uh, it does not feel nice to hold. Sense of dread. Got it. <laughs> uh, the cloak seems pretty normal. Okay. Uh, the potions, there are two healing potions, one greater healing potion. Is that two plus one greater healing or two and one is greater? No, two plus one greater healing. Okay. There is also a, uh, a potion that uh, you've not really seen before. What does it look like? Keep your finger in. If I if I sort of have a look at it, what what color is it? Uh, yellowish, and uh, there is a uh, floating in it. There's an eyeball floating in it. 
would I be able to sort of check to see if I know what that is? Sure. What do you want me to do? Arcana. Ah, yes. One of my stronger suits. Kidding. Where is it? There we go. Uh, and I just need to roll a d4 because I should still get extra to this. <laughs> oh, man. That was... Cat. Yeah, you, you you're not seeing it. Uh, a portion of that type before <laughs> the uh, the eyeball floating it just turn your stomach a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you remind yourself that you ate people stew. <laughs> I'll uh. Cat stew. So I'll I'll, I'll keep the greater yeah, healing high. potion, and I'll I'll hand the other two healing he potions to. He also murdered to... that farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll he hand doesn't the two. Remember that one. <laughs> I'll hand the two healing potions to Ulfa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, who's in front of me, and I'll keep the greater healing potion for myself, and the yellow one with the eyeball in it, I'll, I'll beckon over Duvar and uh, say, here, your share. And just give it to him. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you have a vial of yellow liquid with an eyeball floating in it, Duvar. Okay, do I recognise what it is? Can I say that? Uh, yeah, sure, make an arcana check. Yeah, thank you. You can also just like take a tiny taste or whatever to see what a potion does. So you're giving me two potions of healing. Uh, I can. Um, yes. Uh, so, Duva, you assume this is some sort of ritual that you haven't been shared about, like sort of like a tea drinking ceremony, and you just think, okay, maybe they drink eyeballs. Like, like a frat initiation. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. It's called Potion of Healing Greater in brackets rather than Potion of yeah. Greater Healing. Yeah. It's good. God's sake. Okay, so <laughs> I, d I don't know what it is either. So. so. You're like, you're like, there. Ah, <laughs> says you put it in the Yeah, exactly. Um, if I see, like, uh, uh, Kassar counting out the gold, like, I'll help him if he, if he needs any help. <laughs> well, no, um, I don't need any help counting money. I assure you. Uh, also, while we're resting, I'll pass the tablet to Allura because no doubt she's got more questions. Mm -hmm. So I need to add a potion. Okay, so it's a normal cape, ornamental bad dagger. It was a pretty normal cape. Pretty normal cape, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 everything just reeks of death that you picked up. Even the coins have a, a sort of a, a reek uh, of horrible it. aura. Yeah. Give it a wash. Be all right. <laughs> I so, can um, it all. What coins do I find sort of sifting through the pack? Uh, so two seconds because Laura is going to ask it a uh, like a, a another series of questions. But she will first of all ask how 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 did you survive to Jorvik? Mhm. Mm and uh, Jorvik will say that uh, this city is one of our oldest, and it was uh, it had uh, a. Uh, a, a old mechanical power source that uh, survived the uh, the war, and uh, it sort of shows images of like thermal springs and steams and fans and stuff. And it says, "When all was lost, we survived here, our last mm. bastion in the dark, before the humans returned and slaughtered everybody." That's laughing out of character. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> um. uh, in terms of coinage, Kassar, there yep. are 2,126 electrum pieces. Okay. Yep. Um. And 53 <laughs> platinum pieces. Okay. Electrum. And how many platinum was that? 53. 2,157, yeah. No. How many of us are there to divvy up between? 1, 2, 3... 2,126. 
26, thank you. Okay. Alright, I will, um... So there should be five oh. equal shares, including Alora's. Not including Clock's. Yeah, Clock didn't get his share. So, old. Why not? Old we found you <laughs> lost your share! It doesn't mean I have to lose it. Lure's not paying us, so technically we found it. Even so, I am not particularly happy with you. Yeah, you, you've not lugged out with who's doing the counting, to be fair. Like, of all the people, Alora's uh, uh, boyfriend is, is deciding who get the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'll, I'll hand out the um, the platinum pieces relatively fairly. I'll keep the extra three for myself. If you want me to roll out a sleight of hand for that, I will. But otherwise, I'll hand everyone who gets a share ten platinum pieces. Mm -hmm. I'll be watching you count that very closely, by the way. Okay, ten platinum. And yeah. I wouldn't really care because I, with what we've been through, I try. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not being greedy. I'm just keeping a little bit on the side. Okay, a uh, sleight of hand check from you, Kassar. Okay, Doki. I was watching him count. Do I get like an extra perception in terms of that? Mm. Uh, no. Okay. You can both make dis uh, checks with disadvantage. There's an awful lot of coins. Okay. Would you want a perception check then? With disadvantage. And the Electrum not knowing particularly what it is, I'll just divvy that out normally. Which is 425 each, I just did the math, and every, someone gets an extra one. Yeah, 11 for me, Yeah, so, so uh, Kasai, you pocket the extra one and the extra three platinum. So everybody but Clock gets 425 Electrum and 10 platinum. Someone gets 126, the lucky butter. You. Oh, okay, alright. Oh, that extra one. Ooh, 425 Electrum. And 10 Platinum. And 10 Platinum. We're rich! Yeah, <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I finally have over a combined thousand gold. I've got... No. Oh, to be fair, um, I will go over to Cluck and I will give I him... Say that. I will give him my Electrum share, and I will say, I consider this my debt paid. Um, if you act as you did this day again, you will not live to see the tale. One, 25 Electrum pieces. Fuck. How much is 420? Was that? Electrum is five silver, isn't it? Yes. yes. So it's about... 425 is 10, uh, 10, about 200 10 gold, something like that. Yeah, it's about 200, it's a bit more, yeah. yeah. 212, 213 gold. And how yeah. much do you owe? We owe them only 100, I, wasn't it? I don't know, I don't care. I'm just, I think it was about 100. It's a mixture of I, I, I've lost faith in Cluck as a person, so I'm giving him money so that he doesn't kick up money but also so that i'm not beholden to him at all yeah i'm i'm i i, I would do the same actually but um i will only give him 100 uh i'll give him 200 200 electrum 200 electrum and so say well done <laughs> 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 Okay, so uh, pieces and hide in the corner. Think about what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be very confused because he's got one person saying you're very bad, and the other person going, "Well done." <laughs> <laughs> However, the person who said he was bad gave him more money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah. For the sake of the dagger and the cloak, David, what do you want to, me to add to inventory? Uh, just put it in your uh, notes for now. Custom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, and you still got your uh, pole as well, there, uh, Duvar. Oh yes. Oh, he's ten foot pole. Mm -hmm. My ten foot pole. I keep that now, do I? Oh yeah. Goes in your notes section. Mm. Okay. In the notes section. I have a note. I suppose it kind of looks now. You just have like a staff and a really long staff right next to it. 
on your he back. He likes sticks. He likes sticks. <laughs> Do you want to play fetch? <laughs> so Alora will continue to ask uh, Jorvik questions, uh, but the sort of questions that will go most to your heads. Mm -hmm. She will ask him more about his name, how he ended up to be like in charge of the city. Like the 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 one thing you will pick up on is she will ask him about the uh, the people that transferred into him, and uh, Jorvik uh, will get very ev evasive and won't share any of their names. Just saying that uh, they are us, and we are them. Resistance is futile. <laughs> you yes. shall be assimilated. <laughs> yeah, if, if he was a sort of like killy killy sort of AI, the robot probably would have had friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um. David, can I do an inside check? Having heard that thing about they are them and them are us, mm -hmm. do I do an inside check to whether or not I believe that the personalities that are in the stone are the n the names that he doesn't want to give? Sure, with disadvantage, because this is fucking weird. Yeah. Um, the first one? So the first one was a 20. And then an 11! Oh my god, exactly the same as my last one. Uh, you don't know. No, that's fair enough. I'm just, also, I'm all, like half lit. Like, that's fair. So, I think, long rest, everybody. That where we're yep. at. Although, yep. I will also throw the question at Jorvig. Is there any upgrades for um, Kazar's hand? Uh, he he will say that uh, he's only aware of uh, processes of how to transfer uh, consciousness to machine, not to graft machine and organic. No, that that person's memory never obviously never made it into the um into the construct. Uh, he will say that uh, with, with more time and more data, he might be able to predict uh, a possible upgrade. Ooh. Um, but he will say that to anything. If you ask him about anything, ask them about anything they don't understand. Or don't they will say, to. eventually we will. Yeah, yeah, they will say, after enough data has been gathered, we will be able to predict. Um, Jorvik, uh, just before we bed down for a rest, the armory that Kurtel um, asked you about, what is the inventory of this room? Or at least what was the inventory the last time you were uh, in? Jorvik will say that there are uh, several uh, items of, of uh, interest. Uh, there will be, uh, there is armor and weapons and constructs. I'm, uh, I'm expecting a, 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 a gold metal alloy uh, shell with, that allows me to fly. Painted red and gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> the 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 armor and weapons can are are they of such things make that uh, we would be able to use, or are they made more for the kin that used to live here? He will say that uh, the armor uh, is, is probably of, of, of little consequence to you. Mm -hmm. uh, although the advanced con uh, construction techniques will probably be like beyond anything you've seen before. Okay. Uh, and he will say the, the weapons may be of some use, uh, but uh, most are uh, most are useless uh, without the technology that powers them. Okay. I would probably lean into Cartel and say, I don't know whether the risk is worth the reward with that journey, but we can talk more about that in the morning. We'll take a vote in the morning. However, I'd just like to see if there's anything in there that we could use. Understood. Right. 
and I will like throw my bedroll out and lie down between, like next to Alora, but directly between Cluck and Alora by line of sight. I'll just sit down next to her and nod off. When the group returns to town, they leave Cluck behind and they leave with Alora, and Cluck will have to play as Alora moving forward. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. I, the, I'm mad at him. I'm not mad at myself enough to bring that monster <laughs> along. He's not a monster. I know, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you're all going to benefit from a long rest. Is there anything anybody in particular is doing during this time? That might be of consequence. I will be attuning to my fancy ring, probably. Mm. Only if I can um, sort of find out exactly what the dagger and the, the cloak are. But other than that, nothing. So, inspecting them, I imagine. Hmm. I will ask the machine for its entire history on the, my people. Ooh, that's a good shout. I mean, how you're going to get it off of Laura is <laughs> the other thing. Yeah, so he shouts from across the room. <laughs> yeah, he's just yeah. like, hello, robot! Yeah, so uh, Jorvik uh, will answer that uh, they, they have much on the, the ways of the Arakokum people. Uh, please be more specific with your inquiry. Their history. He will say uh, that the Arakora were once a... Uh, powerful warrior race that uh, that would protect the skies of this world and they were some of the uh, first to, to rise up and uh, attempt to repel the humans and for that they were uh, mercilessly, mercilessly hunted until a few remained. Uh, what little remained uh, aided us in the, uh, the rock project but uh, what became of them at that point we have no record of them. I will then ask, do, does he have any recollection of where their home sort of tribe or homeland is? Homeland is. He will say that he knows the location of the Arakokum facility that was designing their ring. Ooh. And I would sort of say, is it on, is it, is it on the, uh, the map? He will say yes. Would you like me to show you? I said yes. He will say, uh, the Ring of Foresight is located here. Ah. And, uh, Cluck, you can read that and you, uh, and you understand uh, that to be, uh, it, it's Akvarun. And there is a, 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 an apostrophe in there. So A K V apostrophe R U N Akvarun. Akvarun. It says, "This was where the uh, Ring of Foresight was was to be created. This is likely uh, one of like the only known location of uh, one of your ancestors' facilities." Okay, and then I'll ask him, um, "What does this ring benefit, or what's?" What did this ring do? He say he will say it will contain uh, the power of your people, a small but uh, powerful weapon in the times to come. When combined with the other rings, I... a artifact can be forged that can uh, prevent the world being lost to the void. And I will then say, what were the powers of my people? Uh. He will say, he doesn't know. Oh, sorry, we don't know. I need to remember, it's we, we, we. We don't know. We were only concerned with the construction of our own wing and the guiding of all the races in their construction. They each endowed and empowered theirs in their own way. They each was built with the essence of that people. Well, a couple of... Uh... Thank him for the uh, information that he provided, and you go to the corner and uh, 
shed a tear. Oh, he's bringing out the waterworks for the sympathy now. <laughs> Clark's found out where he could be from. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anything else during our long rest? Um, no, not anything, nothing else from. Okay. Uh, then uh, we will all benefit from a long rest, and that feels as good a point as any to uh, end for the night. So we're a couple of minutes early, uh, but uh, it's a it's sort of a good stopping opportunity. So uh, when we start next week, uh, you will all. Uh, <laughs> Benefit from being uh, level seven. Yeah. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. So mm. uh, just very quickly, uh, before we leave, does anybody have anything they'd like to say to our viewers? Obviously, if you're following or viewing for the first time, do give us a follow. Uh, we will appreciate it. Uh, we are here every Very Monday, uh, 18.30 UTC. Uh, we have a Twitter. We will upload our streams to YouTube. And obviously, we're here on Twitch as well. Yeah. So if anything's dropped off of, uh, of Twitch, I don't know if anything does drop off of Twitch, to be honest. But if anything has dropped off of Twitch, uh, you can catch it up on YouTube. Uh, we haven't got everything from the beginning, unfortunately. But uh, I've, we've caught as much as we can. Yeah, now we only started streaming around session 20, so... <laughs> yeah. I would I would quite happily take a public vote on whether the accent stays or goes. <laughs> if I, I get any votes whatsoever from the watching public... Plus, plus one decide. vote for the accent. Keep it. <laughs> like the accent. Okay. I'll put a vote out on Twitter. Okay, yeah. We'll, there will be a vote on Twitter. You decide whether you like this accent. <laughs> Oh, Perfect. Anything else for anybody else? Nope. Perfect. All right. Nope. Take care. Cheers, folks. Thanks Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.